Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. In today's video, we discuss whether you should wear loud and colorful shoes and dress shoes, what the pros are and the cons, and how you can pull them off so you don't make a fool of yourself. <laughs> Shoes are the foundational piece of a well-dressed man's wardrobe, because no matter how expensive your wardrobe is, a bad pair of shoes can ruin everything. Because of that, most traditional dress shoes come in colors ranging from black over burgundy to oxblood to mid or chestnut brown to maybe lighter brown or tan or some darker chocolatey brown. Why are those colors so popular? Well, they're easy to combine, they don't stand out too much, they provide a bit of contrast, and are just considered to be classics. However, if you go back in history, it wasn't always like that. And today, you can wear pretty much anything you want, meaning you can pull off a pair of purple shoes, orange, green, or whatever color you want, including silver, gold, and rainbow colors. As always, though, just because you can doesn't mean you should. Generally, quality dress shoes are an expensive investment, and most men out there don't have an unlimited budget, so if you want to buy a shoe that you can wear 5, 10, or even 20 years down the line, buying that two-tone purple shoe is probably not a great investment. So before we cover the do's and don'ts of colorful shoes, if, and if so, how you should wear them, let's take a brief look at the history, which reveals a surprising element of color in men's shoes. Shoes as we know them today have their origins in Europe, and they have always been synonymous with status and wealth since the Gothic and Middle Ages. Back in the day, materials were expansive, tanning was a dirty business, and cobblers were highly coveted craftsmen. The vast majority of peasant and serfs weren't able to really afford nice shoes. They had rudimentary pieces of material on their feet, and the left and the right shoe looked exactly the same. The style of those shoes was usually rather boxy and maybe serves as the inspiration of boxy shoes today. On the flip side, royalty and people associated with the court had more effort put into their shoes, which meant they had a pointy shape. Also, they were made of more expensive materials, such as velvet. The longer the point of your shoe was, the higher class you were, because it signaled that you didn't really have to work. They didn't have to be practical. They just had to show your status and wealth. These shoes here were known as poulain, and they required actual special lacing so you could even wear them. Moving on to the Renaissance, shoes changed and developed a heel specifically for men. Today, it would probably be something that most men would consider to be feminine, but going back in history, the heel shoe was actually made for men. You can see they were colorful. Sometimes the heel was different than the uppers. And they also had buckles that were sometimes quite decorative, and today we would call them bedazzled. So the original French shoes really have a very close resemblance to the platform shoes today. Men showing off their toned legs in silk stockings was a beauty standard popularized by King Louis XIV. If you think that was bold, hold your breath and look at shoes from the Baroque era. Historically, that's probably when shoes were the loudest and most flamboyant. Silk velvet, embroidery, and even ribbons, all on men's shoes. The wealthy would sometimes also use exotic skins and all types of detailed materials and silk, velvet, fabrics, and everything that made you look rich, including gemstones, laces, and even bright red heels. Looking back at all these colorful shoes, it shows you that the idea of men's fashion or manliness is 100% defined by society and the environment you live in. Wearing makeup, colorful clothes, and bold, loud, colorful shoes with embroidery and gemstones used to be as manly as it is today for a man to drive a truck, go ice fishing, and buck hunting. Let's not forget about the beer afterwards. Cheers! Surprisingly, it wasn't until the Industrial Revolution, starting around the 1830s, that men had shoes for a left and a right foot. Crazy, right? Of course, the influence of Beau Brummel made the entire men's color landscape more muted and somber. And to learn more about his style influence, please check out this guide on our website here. Even the most classic men's dress shoe today 
The Oxford shoe had its origins in women's wear. Yes, Oxfords and Bell Whirls were women's shoes and they then slowly but surely were adapted into the men's wardrobe. Just like the fedora, they picked up popularity with men and then especially young men such as students at Oxford would wear those shoes in that style and then they became known as the Oxford shoe. To learn more about the history of Oxfords and men's dress shoes, please check out this video here. Now, most shoes at the time were conventional, but there were still special things such as the spectator, which John Lobb claims to have invented in order to play cricket. Now, wait a second. Just take a moment and think about someone asking you to wear spectator shoes to play sports. Funny, right? To learn more about it and everything else about the spectator, check out this one here. 100 years ago, new books or suede were also still a little less conventional and oftentimes considered to be less expensive and less desirable and a material for the lower classes. Someone would start wearing white bucks though during summer and sometimes year round and so the material became more popular. Still, for the conservative men, it wasn't the leather or the shoe of choice because it wasn't quite up to par. Now, the king of rock and roll, Elvis, he liked to wear blue suede shoes. In fact, he liked them so much that he even released a track called Blue Suede Shoes. Because of that, blue suede shoes became a popular counterculture item in the 1950s. As you know, though, eventually with the cultural evolution, dress shoes became less important and now sneakers are what most men wear today. That being said, there has been a resurgence in classic men's clothing. And with the help of the internet and improved supply chain technologies, you have many companies now that offer made to order options that allow you to get shoes in pretty much any color under the sun right from your computer. So the question becomes, should a gentleman interested in classic men's style invest in colorful shoes? Well, the short answer is, it depends. Now, it goes without saying that your personal tastes, preferences, and your environment play a huge role in this. Leaving it aside, it will come down to what you already have in your wardrobe and what you don't. And if you want to learn about the first five men's dress shoes that I would buy today, if I would start all over with my shoe closet, you can check out this video here. For example, if you work for a conservative law firm or CPA firm and you don't want to draw too much attention to yourself, wearing a bold yellow pair of dress shoes is probably not the way to go. On the flip side, if you've already got all the classics and you're interested in something a bit more whimsical or something a little more different that makes you stand out from the crowd in a subtle way, maybe an olive green pair of shoes or something gray could be a really good addition. Now, chances are you don't want to look like a clown, like a pimp or a carnival character. So what's the line and how do you pull off colorful shoes? First, before you buy a single pair of bold, colorful dress shoes, I suggest you invest in all the classics because they're versatile and provide a much better value. I'm sure you hear me. A purple shoe is very difficult to combine with most items in your wardrobe. But even a classic, like a white box shoe, may only work with maybe a seersucker suit or pants. When you wear them, you undoubtedly make a statement that says, hey, look at me. And if you want that, then go for it. If not, be aware of it. Because colorful shoes are so different, people will see them first and then the person. And by the third time you wear your brown and white spectators, people will probably know you, ah, this is the guy with the crazy shoes. The advantage of darker, more conventional colors is that they fly out of the radar and people won't even notice until a second or third glance. They can also be paired much more easily with most colors in a classic men's wardrobe. Now the same is true with pretty much any dark color, a navy shoe, a dark green shoe, or even a truly dark purple shoe will not be something that people notice right away. Gray can be a great color for boat shoes or for boots, and so can blue. However, the darker the color, the easier it is to combine with your outfits. The lighter the color, the bolder it gets, the more attention you attract. And sometimes if you like preppy outfits, you want something that is loud in multiple colors. And I own boat shoes, for example, which are more casual 
And so I sometimes like to have a yellow pair of boat shoes or blue and red pair of boat shoes. For dress shoes, on the other hand, everything that is too bright has a very limited level of usefulness. Other than just with shoe colors, you can also experiment with different textures. The more texture you have in a shoe, the more casual it gets. When you combine it with color, you can play around a little bit. For example, a dark brown leather shoe will not draw a lot of attention. However, if you have a woven leather, it immediately makes it more casual without being overly loud. Plus, in the summer, it is a great shoe because the woven leather makes the leather more breathable, so your feet won't be sweaty. Of course, you can also find embossed leather shoes that look like they're woven leather when, in fact, they aren't. Just like this one here in a mid-brown. You can also enhance certain colors by having a mix of suede and calf leather in your shoe. Let's say you have a black or a brown mixed calf and suede leather in the same color. It is louder than a plain suede or a plain calf leather shoe, but it's not as loud as this pair of boots that have black leather and white suede. If we go back in history again, this was actually a style quite popular worn by gentlemen, especially with formal morning wear, and it triggered the interest in spats. So if you couldn't afford a pair of two-tone shoes, you could wear the spats to give the impression to have that two-tone look. Again, what's popular, manly, or classic always depends on the society around you, and it's interesting to see how those standards have changed over time. That being said, the cap to Oxford has been a staple in a classic men's wardrobe for the last 100 years, and it likely will be for the next 100. But who knows what the future holds? If you want to take it up a notch, colorful bold shoes with exotic leather or a blend between exotic and calf leather are even more eye-catching than suede. When it comes to patterned, textured, or colorful shoes, the less contrast you have, the easier it makes them to wear them and combine them with your wardrobe. For example, just compare these color combinations here. There is a black and white button boot. So the style is unusual, the color combination is bold. It's definitely something you'll get noticed in. Next up, we have a brown and white calf leather wingtip Oxford. The materials are the same, but it's still a rather bold shoe. Now, this next shoe is a mix of navy calf leather with gray suede. You can see less contrast between the colors, so it's a little more subtle, but still much more noticeable than the black cap to Oxford. Now, let's say you have shoe colors in black, various shades of brown, ox blood, and burgundy, and you wish you could have something that's a bit more daring. Now, you don't just have to go out and buy a pair of new shoes in one specific color that you may only wear five times over its lifespan. You can also invest in colorful shoelaces because they cost less than $10 and they're reversible. So if you have a brown pair of shoes and you add a yellow pair of shoelaces, it looks like an entirely new shoe. But if you don't like the look anymore after a day or two, you can just exchange them and put them in a different pair of shoes. So experimenting with little things that are easy on your wallet and that are not permanent may be a great first step to see if you're comfortable with the attention you're getting. For a broad selection of quality men's dress shoelaces and bootlaces in round and flat styles in many colors, please check out our shop here. So now let's assume you already bought the colorful shoelaces, you've played with it, and you want to take the next step. How do you actually wear colorful shoes in a tasteful, gentlemanly way? Rule number one is it's always easier to implement color in more casual shoes than it is in dress shoes. So introducing color into a sneaker, into a driving mock, or a boat shoe is much easier than into a cap toe Oxford. One of the first colorful shoes I suggest you invest in if you're at that point is an olive or dark green shoe. Why? Well, first of all, it combines very easily with the rest of your wardrobe. It is not something that shouts, look at me, I have green shoes, but it's something that people will notice maybe at a second glance. Green is also a color that is often underrated in the menswear. If you want to learn why, check out this video here. Just like brown, the dominant color in men's dress shoes, green is a natural color. And because of that, it combines very easily with black, navy, blue, charcoal, brown, and gray. 
Maybe Green Derby is a good first alternative, or a Loafer. You can also have an Oxford, but if you go for that, maybe go for a wingtip or something with broguing that makes it more casual rather than a plain Capta one. You can also go with suede in that color, which is particularly nice during the warmer months of the year, but also during the fall. Of course, it's even easier to maybe have a green pair of boat shoes. For example, here there's this green fresco jacket, blue and white striped seersuckers with green suede tassel loafers, and a Panama hat with a matching green band tying it all together, having a little pop of color in the orange silk knit tie, and a light blue boutonniere that picks up the tones of blue. So having some green in your jacket, your tie, maybe your socks or your pants, will make it much easier to incorporate a green shoe into your wardrobe. Fortunately, most men already have some green accessories, so olive green or darker green is a no-brainer to start. That being said, if green sounds too bold for you, maybe start with a dark navy because it's very close to black and it's something that allows you to ease in to the colorful shoe realm. It looks great with navy suits, but can also be worn with gray flannels. It can also blend into business outfits, or if you want it to be a little more noticeable, you can think about a spectator or two-tone shoe, such as this one here in lighter navy calf leather and gray suede. So once you have a green or navy shoe, the second choice is probably the white buckskin shoe. Even though it used to be a really popular men's item, today it's actually hard to find a buckskin leather shoe or a deerskin leather shoe, which is actually a quite nice leather. It's rather soft. I found the company Shoe Passion offers them, and uh, this is the one I have in my collection. While they're bold, they work really well as a summer shoe with all types of seersuckers or linen pants or even fresco. Look at the white as kind of like the backdrop of your entire outfit that just lightens everything up. Even though it's bold, you can also combine it with pretty much any other color thus rendering it quite versatile. Once you got the white buckskin summer shoes, it's time to think about a nice spectator. The most classic one is probably the one in brown and white. And you can even have black and white, but it's a little harsher of a contrast and I find they're harder to incorporate into outfits. Wearing brown and white two-tone shoes will immediately give your outfit a vintage 1930s flair. One of the first things many people say is, oh, Al Capone and they associate spectator shoes and striped suits with that period in time, but also with mobsters. The good thing about white and brown is that it works with any kind of earthy, natural tone, but you can also wear it with a gray suit or even a navy striped suit. Yes, it's bold, but it still works. Note, instead of leather, you can also find spectators made with canvas, typically not a kind of white canvas, but it's darker, it's like khaki, or fawn, or tan, which means less contrast and therefore easier to combine with other outfits. It's a cool, classic alternative to the brown and white, or in general, spectator shoe in all leather. Once you have the spectator in your rotation, I think a gray pair of shoes is really underrated or maybe something in blue that's a little lighter than navy. Gray can work really well during the summer because it's very neutral and can be combined with a lot of colors. At the same time, it's not as noticeable or loud as a white buckskin shoe. So you can wear it with chinos. I even have gray boat shoes, which you can combine with different pairs of shorts and polo shirts very easily. Preston has a nice pair of darbies, which look really well on him and are quite versatile. I also have a pair of gray winter boots that are lined in a wingtips with kind of a scotch grain leather. They always look good. Blue shoes are a little harder to combine and I find myself wearing them less often, but I know others who like them quite a bit. Let's say you have blue shoes and blue pants that creates a monochromatic look and it's more noticeable than a gray shoe in my opinion. It just looks a little more artificial and like you want more attention. If you want to try experimenting with other colors, such as orange or yellow or purple, it's probably best to not do it with classic dress shoes, but think about a driving mock. Think about a sneaker or a boat shoe. In any case, before you make the purchase, I suggest to consciously think about what outfits and what items in my wardrobe can I combine this pair of shoe with. You'd be surprised how few outfits you can actually wear with a purple shoe. 
Personally, I'm a big fan of bolder, colorful shoes for my casual boat shoes in the summer that I typically wear with either seersuckers or some cotton or linen shorts. I have them in blue and green and navy and red and kind of orangish red. I have them in yellow, in gray, in blue with tan two-tone. I have some in white with tan and it's just fun to wear them. Of course, I also have the classic brown boat shoes, but whenever I can for a casual wardrobe, I just like that pop of color that makes me stand out from the crowd and defines my personal summer style. That being said, what are the don'ts of colorful shoes? First of all, having shoes with extremely bold sequins or colorful flower patterns are just something that are not really part of the realm of a classic men's wardrobe today. And it just makes you look like a bold artist. And if that's what you wanna go for, by all means, invest in those shoes. But if you're here, chances are you're interested in classic men's clothing, and that's simply not part of that. Yes, I know I said conventions are 100% defined by the society we live in at the time, but the fact is we live today and that's what the conventions are and they have been that for a long time. If your shoes have all kinds of patterns, it makes it hard to wear with other patterns in your outfit because you have one more dimension to consider when putting together things. Bold pattern shoes also draw the attention away from your face towards your shoes and they always will be the centerpiece of the outfit. Keep in mind that cotton and canvas are materials that are very summery, they're breathable, they have that nice casual look, but they also wear out a lot more quickly than leather does. Once they're stained, they're a lot harder to clean, so just something to keep in mind. That's why other than for maybe canvas or fabric boat shoes or canvas alpargatas for summer wear, I think fabric shoes are ideal for areas where they don't get a lot of wear and use, which is typically around the house. I'm a big fan of Fabric Albert slippers. To learn more about this type of shoe, check out this guide here. I have them in green velvet or in needlepoint, green with red and black stripes, which is quite cool and unusual. Once you have 50, 60, or even 100 pair of shoes in your wardrobe, the question of longevity really becomes a moot point because even if you wear a different pair of shoes every day, you only get three, four, five, or six wears out of each pair of shoes per year. And so you probably won't have to resole a shoe anymore unless you wear it some more often than others. In today's outfit, I'm of course wearing colorful green shoes. I went with an olive green. It's a darker shade and kind of a more modern elongated last. The shoes are made by Carlos Santos from Portugal and they work well with my jacket, which is green tweed with an orange overplaid. My tie is wool shawley from Fort Belvedere that has green, red, and yellow in it, combining it with a fine striped shirt that has green in it. My vest is fawn colored, which is kind of a shade of green. I'm combining it with black corduroys by Polo Ralph Lauren and socks in black and white. There are these two-tone socks that look like a solid gray color from afar, but actually have black and white elements. They are from Fort Belvedere. I designed them, they're over the calf, and you can learn more about them in our shop here. The pocket square is a light green with contrasting green stitching, picks up the color of the shirt and the vest, and while still green, it has a nice contrast compared to the jacket, and you can find it in our shop here.